Uh, we in the cactus and succulent hobby love the variety of exotic forms that these plants can take. You can just see in this picture, we've got these, you know, super spiny eriocyces in the front. Uh, behind them, we have kind of these, these spineless but flocked astrophytum, uh, myriostigmas. Cactus come in the columnar shapes and even not represented in this picture, we have things like opuntias and epiphyllums, which have totally different growth forms altogether. That's not even to mention the beauty that cactus flowers can have and the variety of colors and, and forms that they come in as well. Um, all very beautiful. So this is related to the morphology of these plants. This is the study of the physical form and external structure of plants. Um, and I think all of us can appreciate the, the beauty of cactus morphology. But in today's presentation, I'd like to introduce everybody to the beauty of the internal structure of these plants, which I'm going to argue is just as diverse and just as beautiful as the ex external structure. And that's going to be studied in the science of plant anatomy, the study of the internal structure of plants. So in order to study their internal structure, that means we have to cut open their, the plants. And uh, sometimes that means uh, cutting open a very pretty or, or very valuable plant I'm going to leave it up to your imagination uh, as to whether I actually cut open this copiapoa. But for the purpose of our presentation here, uh, at least the beginning part, we're going to start with a faster growing plant, uh, this Echinopsis. And we're going to start by taking one of the most basic sections that you can take in plant anatomy. And that is a cross or trans section. This is a section that is taken perpendicular to the long axis of a tissue, and it's abbreviated XS. X for cross, and then the S for section. So probably all of you, whether you've realized it or not, have taken a cross section of a cactus. It looks somewhat like this, um, whether you're trying to graft something or take a, or root a cutting, you've probably seen a cactus um, cut open in this plane. So at this point, uh, it's probably not very beautiful, um, just kind of a green, green mass here of cells. So we'll add a couple labels just to get us started. Uh, first off, we have a ring of vascular tissue around the center of the stem here. And this is, if, you, if you've done grafting, this is the part that they tell you to align um, the scion with the rootstock at. Um, and so we'll talk about this, we'll talk about all these in a little more detail throughout the course of this presentation. But we'll start off with the vascular tissue, and then to the inside of the vascular tissue is the ground tissue. Um, and then there's more ground tissue to the outside of the vascular tissue. Uh, this basically holds uh, the vascular tissue in place and creates a matrix uh, for the plant stem, as well as serves as a reservoir of storage, especially for succulent plants like cactus, for water and nutrients. Then finally, we have the dermal tissue around the outside of the plant, which serves as the skin. So in order to make this a little more beautiful, we have to cut it thinner. So we'll use something like a razor blade here and try to cut as thin of section as we can, and then look at it with a low power dissecting microscope, such as this one. And when we do that, it looks somewhat like this. It's a little prettier maybe, than the previous section, but still not, you know, super, super beautiful probably. So, but we'll pause again at this point to introduce a couple more terms. Uh, we can divide that ground tissue into two different types. One which is inside the vascular tissue, and that is the pith. And then another um, subcategory of ground tissue is the ground tissue to the outside of the vascular tissue, and that is the cortex of the plant. And then that vascular tissue is divided into separate vascular bundles. These are the bundles that help um, transport water and nutrients up and down through the plant body. And then finally, as far as the dermal tissue goes, we can be more specific in that category with the epidermis of the plant as the skin of the plant that protects it from desiccation, as well as from attack by fungi and other pathogens. So 
at this point, as maybe some of you have tried, it's very difficult to get this any thinner than um, probably this with just using a razor blade. So we're going to have to use some different techniques. That involves taking this cactus stem and embedding it in paraffin wax. So here you can see that same exact stem that we've been sectioning so far, uh, dehydrated and embedded in wax, which is kind of a, a not a difficult process, but it does take a few days to do. So, but when we get it to this stage, we can then mount it in a uh, machine like this called a microtome. You can see it written on the side there. Micro means small in Greek and tome means to cut. You can think of like a cat stand, a cat scan. The T stands for tomography, um, meaning to cut or slice. So this whole purpose of this machine is to take very thin slices of tissue, sometimes even the same or thinner than the width of human hair, and that's what we're going to do with our cactus. After we've taken those sections and mounted them on a microscope slide, we can then stain them. This is quite important in plant anatomy, so we'll spend a little bit talking about botanical stains. The purpose of staining tissue is to allow anatomists to see details that would otherwise be transparent or just difficult to see in preserved tissue because after you dehydrate it, you actually leach out all the natural pigments that that tissue has, and it ends up being white, which is very difficult to see on a microscope slide, um, especially because it's so thin. But they have more benefits as well, and that is because stains selectively dye tissues with different properties. And so anatomists can tell the nature of a tissue based on what color it's stained. And so we're going to talk about that in the context of the two most common stains used in plant anatomy, as well as the stains that will be used on pretty much all the slides in this presentation. The first one of those is Saffronin O. This stains things red, and it targets hard, woody tissues. The next stain is Fast Green FCF, and as the name implies, it stains things green and it actually stains things relatively quickly as well. Um, <laughs> considering saffronin, you have to leave it in there. Uh, I leave it, I usually do about eight hours in saffronin, just 10 seconds in fast green. So it really does live up to its name. Uh, but this targets softer tissue. So basically non-woody, just regular plant tissue. Um, so after we've run the specimens through those stains and mounted them and mounted a cover slip, to protect the specimen here, this is kind of what the finished slide looks like. Uh, you can see that I haven't got this all cleaned up yet. Um, it takes about a week for this um, mounting solution to harden. And I just got this slide done yesterday <laughs> for the presentation. So uh, we're looking at freshly cut sections here. Um, but in order to see it with even greater magnification than we could with that low power dissecting microscope, we've got to use something like this, a compound binocular microscope that can have powers all the way up to a thousand times. And the reason it's called a compound scope is because it has two sets of lenses, the uh, objective lenses here, and then the ocular lenses up here. And we compound the magnification by multiplying it to get the final magnification of the image. And when we look at that previous slide with a microscope such as this one, this is what we can see. We're starting to get a little, a little prettier here. You can see these intricate um, shapes formed with these plant cells. But because this, um, what we're going to be looking at here is primarily the cells of plants, should first spend a little bit of time talking about what a cell is and what makes plant cells unique 